The visits of His Majesty the King to Jordan, Egypt and the UAE prior to the Arab summit came within the framework of His Majesty's keenness to enhance joint Arab action. More on this report. With the aim of strengthening bilateral relations and discussing regional developments, especially the situation in the Gaza Strip, the visits of His Majesty the King to Jordan, Egypt and the United Arab Emirates ahead of the Arab Summit, which will be hosted by Bahrain on May 16th, came to coordinate in formulating a common vision that deepens existing relations and enhances Arab solidarity to confront challenges. On the 17th of April, His Majesty the King held a meeting with the Jordanian monarch during which they discussed ways to enhance cooperation and economic integration between the two countries, in addition to the political and security situation in the Middle East. The two monarchs stressed the necessity of international community to implement immediate ceasefire decisions in the Gaza Strip. On the same day following the visit to Jordan, His Majesty the King visited Egypt, during which he held an official discussion session with the President of Egypt, in which they affirmed their commitment to enhancing bilateral cooperation, intensifying diplomatic efforts, working to find peaceful solutions to disputes, and continuing to combat terrorism and rejecting extremism. The two sides also called for preventing the escalation in the Middle East. On the 24th of April, His Majesty the King held discussions with the President of the UAE, during which they stressed the importance of continuing consultations and coordination in accordance with a unified strategic vision to achieve the interests of both countries and strengthen Gulf and Arab ties and international cooperation to spread peace and tolerance. The two sides hope that the upcoming Arab summit will produce positive results and constructive decisions that enhance Arab solidarity and unity. And on the 25th of April, His Majesty the King met with the Vice President of the UAE, where they discussed developing relations at all levels and the necessity of establishing peace, security and stability for the prosperity of the region. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting in Qadibiya Palace. The cabinet affirmed the importance of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's visit to the UAE, where His Majesty and the UAE President, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, discussed the Bahrain UAE partnership and ways to further relations to meet mutual aspirations. The cabinet then congratulated the Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa on receiving the Development Pioneers Medal Award from the Arab Parliament for his significant contributions to national and Arab development initiatives. On World Press Freedom Day, the cabinet commended local media and journalists recognizing their crucial role in promoting national development and expressing gratitude for the noble contributions to the kingdom's comprehensive development goals. On International Workers' Day, Labor Day, the cabinet recognized the efforts of the national workforce across sectors and thanked them for their contributions to the kingdom's achievements, emphasizing their role in driving excellence. The cabinet then approved the following, a memorandum submitted by the Government Executive Committee outlining several organizational procedures to develop the exhibitions and conferences sector, a memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding a draft law amending Article 20 of the law on the matter of controlling smoking and all forms of tobacco, a memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding an MOU between the Ministry of Municipalities, Affairs and Agriculture and Tedwir Group in the UAE. A memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs regarding an agreement on educational services between the University of Bahrain and Boston University in the U.S. And a memorandum submitted by the Ministerial Committee for Legal and Legislative Affairs on the government's response to three proposals and three laws submitted by the Council of Representatives. The Cabinet then reviewed a memorandum submitted by the Minister of Interior and Chairman of the Civil Defense Council regarding preparations for the expected rainfall in the coming days. 
The cabinet then took note of the following ministerial reports, the outcomes of the official visit of the Minister of Works to the UK, and the external participation of ministers and foreign delegations to the Kingdom of Bahrain in May 2024. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with the Speaker of the Representatives Council Ahmed Al Msalam and members of the Shura and Representatives Councils at Libya Palace. His Royal Highness affirmed that the Kingdom's comprehensive development, led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, is advancing steadily thanks to the passion and limitless ambition of Team Bahrain. He expressed pride in the successes of Bahraini citizens, which have created the foundations of the Kingdom's comprehensive development. His Royal Highness highlighted the ongoing collaboration between members of Team Bahrain within the executive and legislative authorities and institutions in the private sector and civil societies, noting that cooperation is the basis for achievement across all areas. He affirmed that providing quality opportunities for Bahraini citizens remains a pivotal goal for the Kingdom, and that all development efforts revolve around this goal. His Royal Highness underscored the Kingdom's commitment to implement a wide range of visions and plans to transform development ambitions into reality. Regional and global issues of common interest were also discussed, as well as latest developments in the Middle East, including the situation in Gaza. His Royal Highness underscored Bahrain's firm stance towards the Palestinian cause and its unwavering commitment to reaching a peaceful, lasting and just solution in support of Palestinians' legitimate right to establish an independent state with East Jerusalem as its capital. His Royal Highness further outlined the importance of protecting civilian lives and de-escalating violence, which threatens regional security and stability. For their part, the Speaker of the and the President of BCCI extended their appreciation to His Royal Highness for his ongoing support to joint efforts between different factions of Team Bahrain. They further expressed their commitment to work towards achieving the Kingdom's wide-ranging development goals to benefit all. The Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah al-Khalifa, the Minister of Interior General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah al-Khalifa and a number of senior officials also attended the meeting. The Chairman of the Shura Council, Ali Saleh, held a meeting with the President of the Egyptian Senate, Councilor Abdel Wahab Abdel Razak, on the sidelines of the Arab Parliament's sixth conference of speakers of Arab councils and parliaments, which was held in Cairo. Al Saleh affirmed that the strategic and brotherly ties between Bahrain and Egypt contribute to the sustainability of partnerships and cooperation, and enriching the unique relations between the two countries. Councilor Abdel Razak noted that Bahrain and Egypt have a long record of joint achievements and notable successes in the development, economic, and trade fields. He also stressed that to continue working to achieve the common interest of the two countries. In a press interview with Egypt's Middle East news agency, the Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa hailed the historical Bahraini Egyptian relations and their progress and prosperity under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the President of Egypt Abdel Fattah al Sisi. He appreciated the result of the recent summit in Cairo, which affirmed the mutual keenness of the leaderships of both countries to consolidate integration and strategic partnership ahead of the Arab summit next May and their commitment to protecting Arab national security and supporting Arab rights and interests, foremost of which is the Palestinian cause. Sheikh Khalid said that the visit of His Majesty to Egypt reflects the keenness of the two leaderships to consolidate political, economic and commercial integration and the comprehensive strategic partnership for the benefit and development of both countries. He added that Bahrain joined the Integrated Industrial Partnership for Sustainable Economic Development alongside Egypt, UAE, Jordan and Morocco, which aims to achieve integrated between integration between the capabilities of these countries. He also said that Bahrain seeks to create Bahrain-Egyptian industrial partnerships and conclude purchase agreements and opportunities. The Deputy Premier added that organizing joint trade exhibitions will enhance the volume of bilateral trade and create an attractive environment for investors. He said that the two countries enjoy strong commercial and industrial relations, with the volume of trade exchange between them reaching $571 million in 2023. The Deputy Premier stated that the challenges that the world has witnessed, such as the coronavirus pandemic, the Russian-Ukrainian war, and the conflicts in the region, require making further efforts to achieve cooperation in order to ensure the sustainability of resources and various economic sectors. Sectors. He added that under the leadership of President Assisi, Egypt witnessed pioneering economic reforms that gained it the confidence of global financial and monetary institutions. He stated that Bahrain appreciates all the Egyptian efforts made towards economic reform and attracting foreign investments and the progress that Egypt has made in this field. Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah stated that Bahrain and industrial investors seek to increase the volume of investment in Egypt. He added that Bahrain and Egypt are keen to continue strategic cooperation and political and security coordination within the framework of a common and di diplomatic vision.
that seeks to protect Arab national security and establish regional peace. The deputy premier stated that Bahrain expressed its appreciation for Egypt's honorable historical stances and support for the security of the Arabian Gulf, as it is an integral part of its national security. He added that Bahrain, under the leadership of His Majesty the King, takes pride in hosting the 33rd Arab Summit for the first time in its history in cooperation and coordination with the Arab League. He stated that ending wars and conflicts peacefully is a priority through effective ceasefire action in Gaza, delivering humanitarian and relief aid to civilians and rejecting plans to attack Rafah or forcibly displacing residents from their lands. The Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa paid a visit to the headquarters of the Administrative Capital for Urban Development Company in Egypt in the presence of the Arab Parliament Speaker Adil Asumi and a member, members of the Arab Parliament Major General Tariq Nasir. The Deputy Premier affirmed that Bahrain, under the leadership of His Majesty the King and the follow up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, appreciates all steps taken by Egypt under the leadership of the President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi to move forward with the desired reform and development process in all fields, especially economic and investment ones, in a way that enables it to achieve economic growth and prosperity. He praised the manifestation of cultural and urban development that Egypt is witnessing and the pioneering experience of its development projects and comprehensive modernization. And upon arrival, the Deputy Premier was received by the Chairman of the Board of Directors and Managing Director of the Administrative Capital for Urban Development Company, Engineer Khaled Abbas. At the beginning of the visit, the Deputy Premier listened to a briefing about the new administrative capital project and viewed the presentation explaining the stages of the project's development. He explained that the new administrative capital is a source of pride for Egypt and Arab countries and embodies the vision of President Sisi of what Egypt will be like in the near future. The Deputy Premier pointed out that the new administrative capital, thanks to the enormous infrastructure and diverse and advanced facilities it was founded on, can be considered on smart cities and integrated real estate development project that will provide a sustainable quality of life and business business opportunities. He wished those in charge of the project's success in achieving the desired goals. After that, the Deputy Premier signed the senior official's record and toured the project. For his part, Engineer Khalid Abbas expressed his happiness with the visit of the Deputy Prime Minister and praised the depth of historical relations between the two countries, which are based on brotherhood and joint cooperation.
The Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa held a reception and dinner banquet to honor Bahraini citizens working and studying in Egypt on the occasion of his visit to the country. He affirmed that Bahraini citizens working and studying abroad are ambassadors to their country who introduced the world to their Arab and Islamic identity, history, prosperous present and achievements during the development march led by His Majesty the King with the follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. He noted that the determination of the people of Bahrain are the reason for their success where they demonstrate the authentic Bahraini values of tolerance, coexistence respect and openness. The Deputy Prime Minister hailed all efforts to serve the Kingdom to raise its status and contribute to its development, which stems from the government's interest in developing citizens' capabilities and skills and encouraging them to work diligently and make outstanding academic achievements. He stated that developed countries can only advance with the efforts of its loyal people who receive all forms of support. He urged citizens working and studying in Egypt to continue to work diligently and to prioritize serving the country. For their part, the guests expressed pride in meeting the Deputy Premier and thanked him for his initiative. They also congratulated him on receiving the Development Pioneers Medal. The Bahrain Institute for Political Development organizes a symposium on the occasion of the Silver Jubilee of His Majesty the King's accession to the throne with the Deputy Chairman of the Supreme Judicial Council and President of the Court of Cassation, Sheikh Khalid bin Ali bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, and the advisor to His Majesty the King for Media Affairs, Nabil Al Hamar, as speakers. During the symposium, the most important achievements that were made over 25 years were highlighted. The Chairman of the Board of Trustees of BIPD, Ali Ramehi, delivered a speech in which he highlighted Bahrain's experience and achievements over the past 25 years. He praised the efforts of those in charge of the National Action Charter Monument, which represents the achievements during the prosperous era of His Majesty the King and reflects the aspirations of the people of Bahrain. The Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs President Sheikh Abdul Rahman bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Khalifa received the Secretary General of the Muslim Council of Elders, Councillor Mohammed Abdul Salam. The CIA President hailed the efforts of the Council, chaired by the Grand Imam of Al Azhar, His Eminence Professor Ahmed Al Tayyib, in defending the nation's causes and spreading the values of dialogue, tolerance, and coexistence. For his part, the Secretary General appreciated the efforts of Bahrain, led by His Majesty the King, in promoting interfaith dialogue, peaceful coexistence, and serving the causes of Islam. The Minister of Interior, Chairman of the Ministerial Committee for Information and Communications Technology, General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, attended a graduation ceremony for the first batch of the Technical Development Program. The program is considered one of the most prominent national pioneering projects. It was organized by the Ministry of Labor, the Information and E Government Authority, Tim Keen, and Bahrain Institute for Banking and Financial Studies. It contributes to achieving sustainability and competitiveness in the public and private sectors and provides quality opportunities for qualified Bahrainis in technical jobs. The Minister hailed the directors of His Majesty the King for digital transformation and expanding e-services to achieve digital sustainability. He also hailed the support and follow-up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to promote Bahrain's technical sector regionally and internationally through IT and telecommunication advancement per global standards. He said that the graduation of the first batch represents an added value to National Electronic Foundation and contributes to achieving the strategic aspiration of the Economic Recovery Plan. He highlighted the role of the Ministry of Education in providing the youth with digital training. He noted that the role of information and e-government authority in providing more than 860A services and over 20 national systems along with providing e-channels to facilitate processing applications. He affirmed that the graduation would positively reflect on performance, speed of processing, work and flexibility. He congratulated the graduates, the program's organizers and all partners. 
IGA CEO Mohammed Al Qaid discussed the details of the program and the efforts to achieve its success. He noted that Bahrain has been ranked among countries with many trainees and certified individuals in cloud computing. The program was organized through on the on job training in different technical di directorates and fields. After completing the program, 41 participants have been employed, 24 of whom were recruited in the public sector and 17 in the private sector. A video about the program was screened, followed by the graduate speech. The Minister of Interior honored partners, representatives of the government sector and companies, and the graduates. The Minister of Foreign Affairs participated in the joint ministerial meeting between GCC Foreign Affairs Ministers and the U.S. held in Riyadh. The GCC side was headed by the Qatari Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs and the Chairman of the current session of the GCC Ministerial Council, Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdurrahman Al Thani. And the U.S. side was headed by the U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, with the participation of the GCC Secretary General, Jason Abdewi. The Minister of Foreign Affairs affirmed the importance of the Gulf-U.S. partnership for the region in light of the conflicts and dangers, which requires continuous action and coordination for their impact on the stability of the region and to reduce regional escalation and enhance dialogue. He added that the focus should be the situation in Gaza, and there is urgent need to address the humanitarian crisis that has continued for over six months, asserting that Gaza requires a reli reliable framework for the post-war era and a roadmap for Palestine and the region for peace, security and stability. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif Bar Rashid Al Zayani, held a meeting with the Egyptian Minister of Foreign Affairs, Samah Shikri, on the sidelines of the World Economic Forum. They discussed the course of the brotherly and historic ties between the two countries and means to develop cooperation to serve mutual goals and interests. They also discussed the war and the humanitarian situation in Gaza and the regional efforts aimed at achieving a ceasefire, protecting civilians, delivering humanitarian aid to the people of the Strip, releasing hostages and detainees, and establishing peace and security in the region. The two sides discussed the ongoing preparations for the upcoming 33rd. Arab Summit, which will be held on May 16th, the summit's work program, and the topics and issues scheduled to be included on the agenda. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif Zayani, participated in a dialogue session in Riyadh at the invitation of Saudi Arabia and Norway to study the two-state solution and the recognition of Palestine as a state in the presence of a number of senior officials and the Arab League Secretary General. The discussion focused on the developments of the war on Gaza, its impact on regional security and stability, international security and peace, and regional and international efforts aimed at stopping the war, de-escalating the situation, protecting civilians, and ways to deliver humanitarian aid without obstacles. They also discussed ways to support international efforts aimed at supporting recognition of an independent Palestinian state, guaranteeing the rights of the Palestinian people and advancing the just and comprehensive peace process in the Middle East. The Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, participated in a dialogue session in the special meeting of the World Economic Forum in Riyadh under the patronage of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister of Saudi Arabia. The Minister affirmed that Bahrain is moving towards achieving the desired visions and aspirations that contribute to the growth and prosperity of the national economy, in line with the directives of His Majesty the King and the follow up of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, in line with Bahrain's Economic Vision 2030 to develop plans and strategies that contribute to achieving comprehensive and sustainable economic growth. He pointed out that the ongoing efforts to diversify the economic base and enhance reliance on the private sector as an effective partner have resulted in many positive outcomes. 
The minister also participated in a session on the Dutch National Quantum Computing Initiative and pointed out that Bahrain and the countries of the region possess the competitive capabilities necessary for the era of artificial intelligence, pointing out the importance of increasing investment and expansion in the field of digitization and artificial intelligence. He stressed that the advantages of technical development exceed the risks and must be used for the benefit of the growth of the economy and societies in order to achieve the desired goals. He pointed out the necessity of preparing the appropriate infrastructure for the field and adopting strategic plans and initiatives that aim to promote digital prosperity, create qualitative opportunities and build a promising future. He also stated that Bahrain has paid great attention to increasing investment in promising sectors in addition to accelerating the pace of digital transformation and preparing digital infrastructure and providing it with various facilities and supporting resources by continuing to adopt pioneering regulatory policies and legislative frameworks in a way that contributes to achieving the desired economic growth. The Minister of Labor and head of the Bahraini delegation participating in the 50th session of the Arab Labor Conference, Jamil Ahmedan, met with the Iraqi Minister of Labor and Social Affairs, Ahmed al-Asadi. They discussed means of enhancing cooperation between the two countries and developing human and labor resources. Ahmedan praised the existing relations between the two countries, stressing the keenness of the Bahraini government to strengthen joint Arab action, especially in labor and human resources development, exchange expertise, and benefit from successful experiences and initiatives, as well as improve labor markets to achieve comprehensive development and the of the Arab nation. The President of Iraq, Abdel Latif Rashid, received the credentials of Khalid Ahmed Al Mansour as Ambassador of the Kingdom of Bahrain to Iraq. The Ambassador conveyed the greetings of His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister and their wishes for good health and happiness to the President and further progress and prosperity to Iraq and its people. The President asked the Ambassador to convey his greetings to His Majesty the King and His Royal Highness and express Iraq's aspiration to strengthen fraternal relations with Bahrain in various fields. He wished the Ambassador success in his new work duties. The new form of the National Leadership Development Program was launched on the occasion. The Director General of the Institute of Public Administration, Sheikh Dr. Rana bint Isa Al Khalifa, affirmed that the program is one of the most prominent programs offered by the Institute to public sector employees at various positions. She noted that the program has been redesigned based on a study of the training needs of the civil service employees to keep pace with international trends in the field of leadership and administrative sciences and the national priorities of the kingdom. Sheikh Dr. Rana noted that the Institute was keen during the process of designing the program to achieve integration between leadership and administrative roles at various positions and to link the program's outcomes to achieving progress in the level of job performance of public sector employees. She added that the program was designed by Bahrainis to fulfill the training needs of the public sector and contribute to qualifying officials capable of achieving sustainable developments in Bahrain. As part of the celebrations of the Silver Jubilee of His Majesty the King, the Chairman of the Sunni Waqf Council, Sheikh Dr. Rashid bin Mohammed Al-Hajri, opened the Sa'ad bin Jabal Ramehi Mosque in Jaw. Dr. Al-Hajri expressed pride in the achievements made during the era of His Majesty the King in developing and reconstructing places of worship across all governorates. He stressed the importance of strengthening the role of places of worship as an essential part of the strategic vision of the government headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, which is an essential part of Bahrain's efforts to promote values and strengthen ties in society. He noted the expansion of housing projects reflects the nation's commitment to providing the appropriate environment for performing religious duties and enhancing social communication. The chairman appreciated the support provided by the donor in building the mosque. 